All right, well, we are out here for a hydrofrac today. Haven't been out here to diagnose anything, but the customer says that the well keeps running out of water. Apparently, it used to be a five gallon a minute well, so I wanna make sure before we start this that it's actually running dry. Well, here we are at the uh, underneath the house, and yikes. <laughs> Looks like the tank sounds to be okay. Uh, they got a new pressure switch on it. Okay. Hey, Justin, tell me what the uh, amp meter reads. 7.2. Okay. Okay. So the amp meter reads 7.2, so we know the pump's working good. I guess the next thing we're going to do is check the static water level of the well and see if it's dry. Hmm seems to be operating okay even though it looks the way it does okay well I've cameraed the well I've checked the water level water levels at 60 foot um, we're gonna go ahead and frack it set the packer at 75 they've been being very conservative with the water so that's why the well is full right now um, I believe the pump is at 300 and the wells only 320 he said there will be times when they you know use a lot of water take a shower and he'll come out look at the gauge and it'll just be sitting on 40 and the switch won't click off i'm about to pull the pump out now to see if the maybe the pump's inadequate but i don't know um so it, if they did replace the pump not too long ago maybe they put too small of a pump in it but if i pull it out and the pump looks good like the pump's capable of working from 300 foot then they are running it down um but you know it's the first time i've been here they've had three other jack legs out here and he said he's just tired of dealing with them oh yeah everybody loves my wheels everybody loves my wheels you see right here duct tape that's why you don't use duct tape because it turns into this mess it turns into this mess right here I'm going to go ahead and help them keep pulling. They also put zip ties on it. And all the zip ties have kind of fallen and stacked onto one another. You don't use zip ties either. Electrical tape only. Ooh -wee. And now water comes out of the end of the pipe. <laughs> okay. Whew, I'm out of breath. We're going to want to make sure and double check the wire. Make sure we don't have any bad spots. Got little knots like this. Those can be bad areas. Hey, once, uh, once I get done fracking or start fracking, we'll come down here, we'll take every piece of duct tape off. Anything that's cut, cut off the zip ties, stuff like that. We'll let it dry and then we'll retape it with electric tape. Okay, well, this is the pump that they put on. A three-quarter horsepower Myers 10-gallon a minute pump. Really good pump. Um, but it looks to me like they had a pump sleeve on this at one time and originally it fell off because you wouldn't put a, uh, a torque arrestor here if it had a, uh, a, a sand sleeve over it and uh, they just left the well seal on it they should have took that off but I'm not going to touch it not going to touch it only thing I'm going to address is the wire okay let's back this bad boy in Justin you ready to put the packer in?
Right now we're flooding the uh, well full of water. Got to get all the air out of the system. You don't want to compress air. That defeats the purpose. I got to go through the uh, hose. See all the air bubbles? That's everything we wanted to get out of the system. Now, we can inflate the packer. Close our packer valve. Electric switch is off. Time to inflate. So basically what we're doing right now, for anybody that doesn't know, that big rubber piece that we stuck down in the well, it's on the bottom of that hydraulic hose right there. It's called a packer. What this system's doing is inflating it into the rock borehole. Okay, we've got the packer swollen to about 1400 PSI. You can let it sit for a minute. You can see that the, uh, the rubber kind of settling in. Now it's at uh, 1350 PSI. Eventually it'll settle down to around 1000. So I like to bump it up to about 1500 and then it'll settle to around 1200. Because we never know how much pressure we're going to end up building with this. Good to go. Uh, before we start, let's give it a little bit of chlorine. About a half a bag should be okay. Here you go, Jeff. I don't want to use the whole thing. That stuff's pretty aggressive on a 300-foot hole. Gotta, I got to remove... I got to... Uh, Loosen my oil cap. It leaks so much. Motor's so old, it'll spit oil out the dipstick. It's been doing that for about five years. So that's our fix. The PCV valve don't don't uh, leach out enough air. I guess the valve seats, the valve seals are leaking. Either that or it's blowing compression into the crankcase. hit it for I don't know a good eight or nine minutes in third gear I originally started in first got it up to about 750 800 psi that's only about 15 gallons a minute when I go to third gear I'm probably in the 30 to 40 gallon a minute or higher range depending on how high or low my pressure is so basically like the lower the pressure gets on the gauge the higher the gallon per minute, the higher the flow rate I'm injecting into the well. Um, and depending on, like, if I'm in third gear, I'm flowing more water than I am in first gear. I was sitting here doing the, the like, calculations on this tag. And basically, here we got 64.91. I was doing the math on maximum RPM. I think what I'm rotating it is about 180 to 200 RPM this big pump with the gear reduction that I've got. So basically it's like one third of that number and one third of that number. So like uh, 22 to 30 in third gear. And that, that would be at 1500 PSI. And we're nowhere near that. We're down, in, we're down like a third of that. We're at the 700 PSI range. 
So we're flowing a considerable amount of water through the two inch hydraulic hose. Our transfer pump that we're moving water over from that water truck through this hose into this tank, that's like a 30 gallon a minute pump. It's, it's a big trash pump that's powered by hydraulics. That thing flows crazy amount of water. Um, it'll fill this tank 500 gallons in about 10 or 12, 13 minutes. Um, and I was out pumping it. So it was, it was down here when I stopped. And the whole time I have, I've been pumping it, it's been sucking it down while we've been filling it. So we're, we've been throwing it to this hole. I just, uh, <laughs> I had a whole lot of RPM going to it to, to flow it really fast. And the motor was getting hot and the tank was getting low so it was time to uh time to give it a rest let it cool down see what happens a little bit of oil comes out but if i tighten the cap it pressurizes it pressurizes the bottom oil pan and oil will squirt out of the dipstick this old iron duke motor needs to be rebuilt but she's still kicking it one of these days we'll put a 350 on it and let her eat Ugh. Most hydrofract trucks use little three-cylinder Kubota motors. Yeah, water's down there about four foot. Let's check the packer pressure. Packer pressure's come down. That's how much it settles into it. Good deal. That's why I like a little electric. We can pump it and manipulate it easily got a little leak back that's a pressure down in the borehole pushing water back out got a little o-ring right there in that fitting the little o-rings leaking once you put pressure under it it stops leaking though all right well while we've been fracking Mike's been going down the pump system. He's been taking off all the old duct tape. You imagine this stuff when it falls off in the well. That this is why you don't use duct tape because let's just say he pulls off 50 or so of these pieces. Just two or three of them perfectly can block the intake of the pump. I've pulled well pumps out where it's like a wad of duct tape just sucked to the intake of the pump and it wasn't working kind of crazy and this is another do not do don't make a, a bundle near the pump like this you can do it up, at, up below the well seal but don't do it down near the pump because you're not going to get any stretch down here you're only going to get stretch from up above and the idea behind this is if the system if the pipe stretches it gives you a little bit of wire to go with it but this is just a point of failure we're gonna have to tape the mess out of that. All right, the tank's full. Let's go ahead and climb up here again. We're gonna hit this thing one more time. Put 2,000 gallons of water into this well in a matter of 30 minutes for three different intervals of flow. All right, let's see what they do again. We're gonna do uh, first, second, third. I'll read out the pressure. 
Okay, I just finished my second full run. It's actually come down considerably on the pressure. This is going to be a really, really nice flow and well. We'll see once we're done. Go ahead and kill the motor. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and open this valve. Now, we still got 250 PSI in the borehole. We're going to let it go back into the black tank. Blowing crazy water. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're gonna let that sit there and flow for about 10 minutes. If we didn't do that and we went back there and deflated the packer, it would shoot up out of the ground. Do not want to do that. While uh, we were fracking, the homeowner went and got the correct type filter. He uh, he had a filter that would only flow three gallons per minute. And he went and got this one here, which is a five micron string woven. This will flow somewhere around 15 gallons per minute. So he didn't like the fact that uh, he could take a shower, but you can't run two showers at the same time with the filter that he had. He had a two micron filter that was only a three gallon a minute flow rate. This is a five and it's a 15 gallon a minute flow rate. I love the poly woven, string woven filters. They just look like yarn. These are the types you're gonna wanna get. You wanna get the ones that just look like it's, it's just wrapped up yarn. All right, now we're letting the hydrofrac do its thing. I come here to change the filter. But now that we don't have any water pressure on the system, we want to check the bladder tank and see how much air it's got in it. My guess is it's going to be low. This system, you really have no access to it whatsoever. I gotta find the damn thing first. There it is. God, the wind out here today is terrible. Here we go. I got good pressure. Let's see. 13 PSI, yeah. On a 3050 switch. So we, we need to uh, pump this thing back up to 26 PSI. That'll really help his pressure. And then changing his filter will be another help. Yeah, buddy, look at this filter. Thing looks terrible, don't it? That's why he has such a bad flow rate. Look at the water in this thing. Always remember, don't lose your O-ring. Let's pour this thing out and show y'all how much sediment's in there. It's gross. Gross, gross. Wow, yeah, it's caked in there. Sometimes it's good to have a bucket of water. That way you can clean them out and rinse them out. Right now I ain't got no water pressure, so I'm gonna take it to the truck and rinse it out with the water we got. Okay, got the can all cleaned out nicely. I'm gonna go ahead, put in the new five micron filter element. Make sure the O-ring ain't got no dirt and no sediment on it. Set it back in place. Good deal. And then we'll pop it on. All right, filter's on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go get my little air compressor and we're gonna pump this tank back up to 26 PSI. So check this out. All the water that we flowed into the well, it's pushing it back. Look at it. Probably giving me, I don't know, 15 gallons a minute back. That's a, that's absolutely insane. It filled up the 550 gallon tote and then it started overflowing. So I went ahead and I just popped the packer so hopefully it'll come back here. Eventually, the water level down there will start to rise as the uh, packer slowly deflates. Cause I've got the, uh, I've got my valve open. So now all the, all the, uh, oh, look at that, it's flowing too fast. Look at that, that's your vegetable oil. Had it going too quick. I have to add some more to it. Really pushing it back. Got some mad pressure coming out of that. Okay, let's see where the water level's at. 
Oh yeah, she's slowly coming. She'll be here in a minute. Look at that. Look at that. She is giving it back, y'all. I've got the valve shut off over there so I don't have any water flowing down into the well through the hose. So all of that's coming back out the ground. Insane. Let's just hope it flows that fast naturally back into the borehole. But we know that ain't going to be the case because right now it's under pressure. But you can see, you can see the turbidity in the water. So that is the, uh, the stuff that we, you know, get out of the vein. And you could also see it in the filter. All that, all that trash in the filter, that's the type of stuff that plugs up the well veins. So we just flush that stuff out. All right, got the little baby generator, or got the little baby air compressor, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and pump this thing up to, uh, I guess what, 26 to 28 psi, since it's a 3050 switch. You know, I wish more people would act like this. I got hired here, you know, came here with the intention of doing a hydrofrac, and I had never done any previous service, so I didn't really know if the well needed a frac, but talking to the homeowner and talking to the guy um, who had replaced the pump a couple years ago he said you know the well was dry couldn't pick it up had to wait three days for the well to fill up and ever since then they've just used the water sparingly and he goes if the water ever quit I turn the breaker off and leave it off all night long that's typical common signs for a well that's running dry especially for the fact that it's 320 foot deep and they put the pump at 300 so that, that's also another indicator. Now, when I got here, I noticed that, first of all, you know, if you're hired to do a job, you work for a company, I've, I've heard them where they've said things like, oh, well, that's not on my ticket. If you want me to do that, you're going to have to call headquarters and tell them that, and then we'll have to come back out. If you're out there and you service somebody's property, do the right thing and go over it top to bottom. If you're just there for a service, you need to address everything. Because, you know, what you're going to do if you're honorable enough to give a warranty, then maybe your part that you installed is going to fail because you neglected to go check another part. Now, I'm not saying replace it for free or just go ahead and replace it and tack it onto the bill. But inspect the system top to bottom. Like for here, got hired to work on the well. So we're gonna address the well pump. We're gonna address the wire. We're gonna address the filter. We're gonna address the tank. And in some cases, and maybe even here, if they allow me, I'm gonna go inside and inspect the toilets to make sure we don't have a hung toilet that's actually draining the well dry. There's so many variables, you know. If you do something, just be thorough about it. It's really that simple. It's gonna take you an hour to get somewhere and it may take you 20 minutes to do things right. You know, an extra 20 minutes to do things right rather than just doing what you're told. All right, we got the packer out the ground. You can kind of see, look at all the sand. Look at all that, that's crazy. There's all the stuff that's plugging it up. And then the packer's still kind of swole. See how it gets fat? That's a good packer. I like the Duro Packers. Time to put the pump back in. When we hook it up, we'll let it we'll let it flow for a little bit. We'll make sure that it all uh it all works correctly. Then we'll go inside and check its pressure. Yeah, it ought to be a whole lot better now. Got a filter that'll flow five times the amount of water than the old one. But a plugged up filter and a dry well are two different things. Alright, we got the well pump in. Let's go ahead. We're going to turn it on. I hear it flowing over here. That's a good thing. Alright, let's go ahead and go to the front. We'll flow water out the front. We've got a storm upon us. They said that they was gonna, it was gonna start raining about 2.33. Look like it's coming in a wee bit early. All right. Not 
fast. Go ahead and let it blow all the air out. Right. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna inspect the tow loads before we leave. So this one looked good. It had a lot of trash in it, so I tried to stir it up a little bit. But that little black flapper down there, it uh it's probably 20 years old, so typically I like to replace those when they get old. But you can tell here that's where the water line was. So what we want to worry about is if it's overflowing or if that flapper's leaking. So this toilet was actually fine. Well, we're all done for the day. I checked both toilets in the house. Both toilets look fine. Uh, it's just good to double check everything, make sure there's nothing using water, nothing stupid that other people, you know, overlooked or just not thought about. So it was uh, actually a really good frack. It had really good pressure at the beginning, and then towards the end, I was able to really get it in a, uh, a high RPM range in third gear. Uh, I'm going to say third gear on the beginning, I got like 900, 950. And then towards the end of it, she was down around 550 PSI. So she opened up really good and uh, a lot of sediment. So the filter is going to do a good job. It's going to get a workout over the next few weeks. I told him he's probably going to have to change it quite frequently after the frack. But um, another one for the record books. Make sure y'all get a video a thumbs up on your way out. And I will see y'all on the next job. Peace.